I would like to add one more terms which is falsely and poorly translated into English. Sanskrit word is mithya. Yeah. It is translated as illusion. Uh, first of all, first of all, thank you. Uh, mithya and its meaning is explained in one full appendix in this book. Appendix A is on uh, the different Vedanta ideas of Mithya, none of them saying it's illusion. Different, not just Advait, but different. It's more dependent existence. It's not unreal, but not independent. Does not have what is called self-existence. And under that definition, even the Buddhists would agree. They don't agree, believe in theism and God and all the Brahman, but they believe that no thing, nothing has separate self-existence. So, uh, they wouldn't say that this object is dependent upon Brahman, that the way Hindus would say. They would say it is not independently existing. But what it depends on is not Brahman, but something called coexistence, mutual coexistence of everything. Yeah? So, uh, this is exactly the kind of discussion in this book. Now, the remedy, lot of gurus with the defensiveness they have given, is that the only way I can explain is by give, saying it's illusion. I don't buy that. Because then every generation from Vivekananda who translated so much in English, he understood the meanings. But every generation that goes on loses the true meaning and the, what, how it is communicated to Western universalism becomes like the assumed meaning. Because Western universalism is so powerful. The person who knows like Vivekananda has his private reality in which he knows mithya and then he is speaking public real, publicly to the western audience, he is calling it illusion and therefore he know he is clear. But this communication to the west circulates, becomes translated, becomes part of the textbook. It is how Indians in future generation also learn. So now the reason Indians are confused and they keep saying illusion is because we ourselves started it in order to become more easily accessible to the west and then that westernized version became re-exported back to Indians also. So I would offer a different idea. I would say do not tell the pancake guy that this is the same, is a pancake only to make it easy. Do not make it easy. He has to work hard to get, learn to make a dosa. It's like don't tell, don't tell the guy that we are doing exercise but you know we are just are doing all this thing and all that. Tell him you are doing yoga and you are not doing exercise and I, you have to keep learning. It may take you 100 years to figure out what is distinct about yoga and why it is not exercise but that is the effort, that is the purusharth, that is the sadhana that you have to do. So philosophically, Germans have got many terms from the German language, they are part of English and they have introduced them because the English language didn't have such a term. So if we, if we introduce the term mithya, if we introduce the, this term, there is not, we are not uh, being tough guys to be mean and uh, unreasonable. We are saying that the English language is being enriched by a philosophical principle. I have explained in the appendix writing pages and pages to explain what it means. But it is not a one word translation. You see, it is not a one word translation. You, you can explain it in English but it takes a lot of effort and the person better learn otherwise he doesn't get it. When you keep control of your categories, the discourse is on our terms. The first thing when somebody asks me what do you think of the caste system, I tell him caste is a European word, it's a Portuguese word called casta, casta and it, it got introduced. There is no Sanskrit word. So I do not, uh, I think casta, caste is a European concept brought into India and accepted by India. So they say, well, but we have a caste system. I say, no, we have a jati system. I have taken control of the discourse because I control my term. We have jati and we have varna. So I will explain to you what is jati, what is varna. And we can argue and discuss how it is similar to what has become caste, how it is different from what has become caste. So the digestion of jati and varna into Western universalism category of caste has come about as a very big problem for India, breaking up India, fragmenting India, caste politics, vote bank politics, is because we have taken that category and forgotten our own category. It's a category problem. And to reverse this problem, we have to re reconnect with our own category and explain. 
Jati was very different in the sense that Jatis were not fixed in a, stra- uh, in a hierarchy. Jatis were fluid. Some Jatis would move up and down. And you had people of different Varna in the same Jati. So every Jati from the lowest to the highest has its own priest class, its own pujaris, its own, you know, it's not like uh, uh, the lower, lower, so-called lower Jatis don't have their own house of worship. They have their own temples. They have their own, uh, you know, people doing uh, purohits. So uh, this idea that this whole Jati has uh, got no religious authority and it all depends on some other religious authority is a very recent and a wrong idea because they, the, the, you go to, I went to Nagapatinam after the tsunami because we built a youth hostel there and I lived with the fishermen, very, they call scheduled caste, backward caste, all these kind of things. They have their own uh, Devi Mandar, they have their own goddess temple, they do doing their own puja. They, so obviously uh, they are not ex- excluded from temple, they have their own. So the concept is different if you understand it in their own term, in our own terms. So that's my response to that.